DNA replication. Remember that uh, DNA is replicated in the S phase of interphase? Yes. So uh, the special processes involved in that we're going to talk about briefly. We're not going to talk about details of it. If you remember the DNA structure, it's a double helix, remember? Remember yes. it's a double strand? Yeah. Yeah. So which base pairs, uh, base pair which with each other are complementary to each other? A is complementary to? T. 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 G, G with C. C. So that's very important during DNA replication, okay? Um, yesterday, we just defined some terms here, and we'll just go through them again. So when we're talking about a gene, you know, when you hear the word gene, we're talking about the smallest functional unit of DNA, okay? So it's, it'll have a particular position in the chromosome. So you know, the insulin gene might be in our particular chromosome, you know, chromosome two or whatever, okay? So uh, we find that this is a short segments that code for one or more proteins. And if you look at the total DNA in the cell of humans, you find that there is about 20,000 genes on all the 46 chromosomes, okay? And the term gene expression is the product of these genes. So uh, RNA or protein, okay? So that's what gene expression is. So you can have, uh, you know, transcription and translation to get the end products, like uh, RNAs and uh, proteins, okay? So uh, the three processes that are important in DNA function is replication, obviously. When you dividing the cell into two or when you're making gametes, DNA replication is important to make copies of the DNA. So all the daughter cells will have, in terms of somatic cells, uh, uh, is exactly the same DNA because they're undergoing mitosis. So in mitosis, we get identical uh, daughter cells, while in meiosis, remember that uh, there is uh, DNA replication before meiosis. So it's important to duplicate the chromosomes so we can end up with four cells that are haploid in the end, okay? Containing 23 chromosomes each. So DNA replication is important for that. Transcription is important for making RNAs. So messenger RNA, tRNA, ribosomal RNA, microRNAs, and all. Uh, 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 there's many other RNAs that we, we won't talk about, but the main ones that we will concentrate are the uh, messenger RNAs, tRNAs that we'll talk about, and we've already talked about ribosomal RNAs before. Remember? Yeah. In yeah, chapter three, ribosomal RNA, and ribosomal proteins make the ribosomal subunits in the nucleolus, okay? And then finally, the translation is talking about the process of converting messenger RNA into protein, and this happens in the ribosomes, okay? So the ribosomes read the message, and yesterday I talked to you about the uh, codon table, remember the triple code? Each three uh, RNA sequences, uh, code for a particular amino acid, okay? So that, that's the function of the ribosome translation. So first, let's have a look at DNA replication. As I mentioned, you see that the uh, DNA molecule is a double helix, okay? So it's got a double strand. And as I said, you get base pairing between C and G. So if you find a C on the opposite strand, Okay, so we call we call them sense and anti sense strands. Okay, you find a G. If you find a T here, you find an A always there. And if you find um, A on the other side, it will be T. So if you find a um, G, okay, the opposite will be C. Okay, so A T C G base pairing. So uh, before obviously. Before a uh, uh, cell division, there needs to be uh, in the interface. We need to get the DNA duplicate. Okay, so this is what's the uh, the, the the importance of DNA re replication because we want to make exact copies. Okay, so how do we do that? So enzymes actually come and 
we need to unwind the DNA, the double helix, to get access to the DNA to make a copy of it, okay? So there's certain enzymes that will come and bind to the DNA and relax it, open the uh, double helix, okay? So enzymes like helicase, okay? It's not mentioned in the lecture, but, uh, you know, it says certain enzymes, but the actual enzyme is called helicase, okay? So it comes and binds and opens up this uh, double strand, and it creates what we call a replication fork. You know the fork you eat your food with? It looks like a fork, doesn't it? Mm. So it opens it up and creates a replication fork. So the enzyme helicase will come and open this double-stranded uh, and relax the uh, double helix. Yes, sir. Yes. There are enzymes that hold the DNA to make it still open, not close. What's it called? Yeah, uh, I forgot the name of them. It's some proteins, not enzymes. Yeah, protein. Yeah. I forgot their names. S and S P N or something like that. I actually forgot the name. But there is yeah to keep it open, while the polymerase, another <coughs> enzyme, DNA polymerase, adds the uh, or polymerizes the uh, new nucleotides that are binding to the complementary DNA. Okay. Yeah, the small red one. Huh? It's a in, uh, yeah, it's a small small proteins that actually keep the DNA yeah, open. I forgot the name of it. Okay, so the important thing is that uh, to understand uh, is that the d double helix is opened up, it's relaxed, and giving access for free nu nucleotides, okay, to bind to it. Now the process is happening on both strands. DNA is replicated from what we call from a five prime to three prime. What the, remember the structure of the uh, nucleotide? <coughs> it had a three, uh, on position three, it had a hydroxyl group. Mm -hmm. So if you have a look, you know, uh, I think it was, uh, you know, the sugar, there was a one, two, I think it starts here, one, two, three, there was a, So uh, the OH group, and then there was a uh, phosphate group, okay? So uh, I think it's carbon one, one, two, three. So this one should be carbon five, okay? All right, so on the, on the carbon three, we find OH, on carbon five, we five, we find the phosphate group, okay? So DNA is replicated in one direction, from five prime to three prime, okay? Would be oh, cool. That's a good thing. Yeah. So uh, now, if you go in this direction, five prime to three prime, and then in this direction back, this way is five prime to three prime, okay? So DNA is replicated in one direction, okay? Now. <coughs> The strand is opening in this way, okay? Yeah. So if the enzyme starts here, it starts to replicate this way, what about the region that's being opened ahead of it, okay? Behind it, how does it replicate that? So one strand in DNA replication is continuously replicated, okay? Because it just follows the replication fork, okay? okay. So this one, this, this one is just continuously as the, uh, as the DNA is open. Okay. But this one, it starts off here, then goes down, okay? What about, there's a gap here now. Actually, the second strand is made uh, by fragment, okay? In fragments that are put together later on, so. Okazaki. Yeah, Okazaki fragments, so. But uh, before DNA replication can happen, what we need to do is add some short nu RNA nucleotides into it, okay? So, but we, for us, we don't need to know that information. It's, it's extra information, okay? What we need to know is that the replication, oh, uh, during replication, helicase opens up the DNA molecule, okay? Uh, as it's opening it up, complementary bases, okay? Nucleotides. So G, Z, they come, free nucleotides bind to the uh, DNA. And then the enzyme 
DNA polymerase. So, uh, so primus helix. Sorry. Primus helix. Yes, helix. Primase. Helix. Helicase. The protein that make it helix. Helicase. Helicase. Yeah. So helicase is the one that opens it up, and then you get uh, another enzyme called comes and binds. We call this DNA polymerase. It binds the what? Doctor. Binds to the. So it's actually what we call. Uh, Initially, to start DNA replication, you need something to start at what we call a primer, okay? Ah, oh, okay. So some nucleotides of RNA are attached to it, like short, okay? okay. This is not, not going to be a part of the new strand. This is just to act as a, what we call a primer, okay? To start okay. the replication. Exactly. But uh, let me just... Get, it's removed. Yeah, but we don't need to know all that, okay? Let me just... Give you the information what we you need to know okay because some students might get confused about this extra information all right okay. let me just t talk to you about what you need to know okay but the process does involve adding a primer but we don't need to know that all right so i'll just explain it again okay so this enzyme helicase comes up to open opens it. the strand okay yeah. double strand relaxes the dna the enzyme dna polymerase okay binds to the each strand okay and then within the nucleus okay you find um free nucleotides okay you know a t g c okay mm -hmm. and they will come and start making complementary base pairs between them okay as they're making them what happens is that the dna polymerase then joins them together how do you spell polymerase mm -hmm. Okay. So it joins the base pairs together, forming the new strand. So in the end, what happens is we call this sort of um, DNA replication semi-conservative because it conserved one of the parent strands. Okay, it used it to copy the new one. Okay, so we still have one of the original. So semi means it's half conservative. It conserved half the DNA from the parent. You understand why that's happening? Anybody confused about that? So we got the original strand, okay, in the cell. Before DNA, uh, before cell division, the DNA is replicated. So during DNA replication, the DNA double helix is open. So there's one of the strands, there's the other one, okay? The original strands. So to the original strand, complementary base space come are added by DNA polymerase, okay? Yeah. As you do that, you create two new strands, double helixes. Yeah. Each one of those has one original strand, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it conserved half the DNA, didn't it? Yes, sir. So that's why it's called semi-conservative, all right? You got that? Semi? Semi-conservative. Because it conserves half of the strand of the DNA, okay? So this, uh, this thing called a semi conserved Because it co conserves one of the strands, okay? That's what it basically means. One of the strands is from the parent strand, there's a new, and the other strand is new, okay? Yes. Exact same copies, because it's using complementary base pairing. In the end, you end up with two new ones, okay? Exactly the same as before. So, if you have a look at here. So, it means one from the parent? And yeah. So, if you had. I'll just make, say this is a DNA strand, okay? When you open that up, okay? So, let's open it up. So, it should look like that. So there's one of the original strands, okay? What happens is DNA polymerase comes and adds complementary base space. So he'll add A here, here. Then he'll add it the same way here, okay? A, A, G, T. So you see, this 
and this is from the original, correct? Yes. Yeah. These are the new ones. Now, does that look like that? The opposite. Yeah, it looks the same. Exact same. I just made the, you know, I'll put the base bearing on this side so it makes it look the same. So it's the same, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So the strand uh, from the bearings, from both of them or just like the mother or? No, 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 no. We're talking about parent cells, okay? Okay. okay. We're not talking about father and mother. Yeah. So the same same conservative is this is the complete the the, 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 the complementary base of the other strand. Yeah. So it, it's just adding complementary base base to the strand. So if in this strand it's adding T. On this strand it's adding I. I. Okay? okay. So in the end you get exact copies. And this is what this is. So uh, this is what you how you make the duplicated chromosomes because they're exact copies okay mm -hmm. you got that so now where is the original <coughs> and where is the copy this is the original this this is, this is what was copied so it's semi-conservative conserved one strand didn't it, yeah. it need, when you're copying something you need something to copy from don't you yes i'll give you you know i can't give you a blank sheet to go and photocopy it you have to have give you some information to photocopy it how can, can we define the original from this? Well, we can't do that. Because they're the it's same. The same. Mm. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. uh, one of the strands are continuous to bond. What's the name of it? So one of them will... Con uh, one of the strands will be from the replicated parent. continuously, okay? The other one in fragments. So it will be like... If it starts here, it will make that fragment. Then it will start again here and make another fragment. Start here because it's opening this way, okay? So it can't make the DNA uh, strand following the replication form. So it has to make it in fragments. These fragments are known as, uh, they're named after the guy who discovered a Japanese scientist, Oka Zaki. I think this is how you spell it, his name. So there, there will be an enzyme that will come and join these together. We call that ligate, that ligates them, okay? Ligate. DNA ligase joins the fragments together to make, you know, a complete transition. Are you in this classroom? Oh. No. No. That's a very good I thought I didn't see him before here. Okay. So, yeah, all right. All right, so we can move on from that. But well, we didn't take Hozaki uh, yet. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Okay, so, well, what is the representation? Is it the DNA so DNA helicase opens up the, uh, the double helix, relaxes it, separates the two strands. Then what happens is uh, enzymes form, uh, uh, so primase, okay? Come and add short string of primers, okay? This, this acts as a starting point for the DNA polymerase to copy the strand, okay? Then, Three nucleotides will come and make complementary base pairing with so T with A, T with C, so like that. Then the DNA polymerase will start to join those two together. So on the, this we call this the leading strand, okay? If you want to know the name of it, it's called the leading strand, the one that is being copied in one direction. The, the, the complementary one, you mean, or the continuous? The one that's continuous. We call it the leading strand. And that one we call the lagging strand because it's always lagging behind. The one that's copied in fragments is called the lagging strand because when it starts here, then this is open, it has to copy this, so another, it has to start in fragments, okay? So the new one called the lagging. No, both of them are. 
So this one is lagging because it's made in fragments. It's lagging behind always. This one is leading because it's following the replication fork. And the one from primers the primers to produce the, the, the primers, primers the primers are a short string of nucleotides that are added. It acts as a starting point for the DNA polymerase to start copying. Okay. Now let me tell you what you need to know for the exam. Okay. That's that all that was extra information you just asked about. What you need to know is that during DNA replication, you don't even know, need to know helicase. Okay. Enzymes relax the DNA double strand and open it, separate the two strands, okay? DNA polymerase will come along and then join complementary base pairs that are, be, are attaching to the DNA strand, okay? The new DNA strand. So, as we said, G to C, C to G, A to T, okay? And it keeps on doing that okay. until it makes two new strands that are exactly identical to the original one. That's what you need to know. You got that? All right. Sometimes during DNA replication, you can get mutations. Mutations are changes or alterations in the DNA, okay? And we have different types of them, but we're not gonna go into them. You know, you can get have deletion, substitution, and so on, okay? So, different type of mutations. So, what's happening is it's happening during uh, replication, okay? Errors are happening. So, sometimes instead of, uh, you know, you got you know, instead of A, what happens? What you, 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 the cell might just add a G or something like that. So now there's an error, okay, in one of the strands. Substitution. So uh, substitution, okay. Or sometimes it can delete, all right, remove a, a base pair, okay. So this is an error in the DNA that uh, the cell either needs to repair or sometimes if it's carried on, it can cause diseases like cancer, like, you know, many, many diseases that are related to genetics. So, uh, things that do that, like physical things, like um, uh, the UV radiation from the sun, x-rays, gamma rays, these sort of things, physical forces that can damage the DNA, okay? Or chemicals, we call them carcinogens, you know? Uh, you know, in cigarettes, you find different type of chemicals that can cause lung cancer, okay? That's because they change the DNA, okay? So, it can be either physical or chemical. Uh, physical, like a UV, uh, X-ray, uh, X-rays, um, or chemicals like... Um, you know, a lot of the chemical uh, drugs, some drugs that they used to use before, uh, or uh, pesticides, okay? To kill, uh, you know, pests, bugs and so, some of them are now uh, banned because they're carcinogens. Like, uh, what was it, DT, D, DTT, have you heard of that? No. Malathine and so on, these different type of sprays they used to spray. Now they know that they, they're causing a lot of uh, genetically related diseases, okay? So chemicals, okay? can cause changes in DNA, all right? Um, so, uh, if you find the uh, mutation in the somatic cell, it can lead to diseases like cancer, okay? But this, because it's in the somatic cell, it's only confined to those cells, all right? Your whole body doesn't have those. Only those specific cells will have the DNA changed, okay? Uh -huh. And this can lead to cancer, for example, all right? Yeah. yeah. But not all the cells, okay? It's happening in somatic cells, so it's specific cells. If it ha and you can't pass that on, okay? It doesn't pass on to the new generation because it's not in the gametes, okay? So somatic uh, mutations don't pass on to the new generation, okay? And they can cause diseases like cancer, okay? So, doctor, 
for example, a father have, has cancer. Uh, the the children will not have cancer. Not, not, uh, we will not uh, have cancer, but now we'll increase the possibility to get cancer. Ah, you mean uh, if it was genetic related, maybe, you know, sometimes some cancers run in the family, but uh, not always, oh, it's not the case, okay? Okay. So, uh, like skin cancer, you know, it's caused by UV radiation, exposure to radiation, this, the DNA is damaged in the skin cells, okay? And this causes melanoma, a type of skin cancer, okay? Because what? Melanoma. Okay? So, it's a type of skin cancer, uh, so... It's exposure to UV light. People who go to the sun and expose themselves, you know, it happens a lot in the Western countries. Mm -hmm. They go to the beach and the take their clothes off and lay in the sun and tan <laughs> themselves, okay? This is, gives you high risk of uh, UV radiation, okay? So this, this is caused by physical forces. So UV, okay? Uh, doctor, so basically for slight suns, they happen uh, that they could cause cancer. Yeah, it, one of the things is it can cause cancer, okay? That's it, right? Well, this is basically. Yeah, and yeah, this is an example, okay? Oh, example. All right. So if it happens in the gametes, so it's happening in the reproductive cells, okay? Like the sperm or in the, uh, in the egg. This one can, once it's in there, it will pass on to the new generation. Like um, sickle cell anemia, okay? It's genetic. So uh, mutations in somatic cells don't pass on to the new generation. However, if you have it in the gamete, it will pass on, okay? But don't worry, you know, the cell has ways to repair itself if it finds a mutation, okay? So there is mechanisms. That's why not everybody's getting cancer. It's only rare cases because it's, uh, it's happening, you know, mutations happen, errors happen, uh, but the cell has mechanisms. You remember, we watched that video with checkpoints, okay? Yeah. So if an error happens, the cell can repair it, okay? If it can't repair it, it can actually cause the cell to die, what we call apoptose, okay? Terminates the cell. But Sometimes in cancer, what happens is those mechanisms which help to repair DNA damage are also damaged. So the cell cannot recover from the mutations, and this leads to cancer, okay? So uh, it's important that we have DNA repair. Otherwise, we will have so many mutations in our uh, cells, okay, in our DNA. So. DNA repair is important for survival of the organism and the species. Otherwise, you know, through these thousands of years, we will have accumulated so many mutations that the species is no longer viable. You know, it will go extinct. So, first of all, the, you need to detect, okay? So, enzymes will come along and actually proofread the DNA after it's replicated, okay? And these mechanisms are more active during the beginning of S to the end of G2, okay? They're checking the DNA. It's just like proofreading, you know, you might write an assignment, you give it to somebody else, they check it, oh, you, you, need, you didn't put a punctuation mark here, you, this is need to be capital and so on, okay? So enzymes will come along and proofread the DNA. So they will, they will de detect, okay? They will check for errors. If they find it, they will cut it out, okay? So they'll cut it out, put a new one, and then enzymes will come and join those new base pairs back to repair. So how does it do that? How does it know that there's a repair? Because remember, that's why the, uh, we have two strands, okay? So if there's an error in one strand, the cell can use the other strand to repair it, okay? So, for example, you know during DNA replication, we just had DNA replication. Uh, uh, so you had A, T, C, G, and there's the other strand, um, T, A, G, C. So during re replication, you know, you had the T, and accidentally there was a C put there, okay? 
There's a mismatch there. So the enzyme will come back and read this, okay? It'll read it back. Once it reads it, it finds this thing, okay? This one doesn't belong here. Cut it or uh, change it, doctor? Cut it out, Cut okay? It out. Put a new, the new one will come, okay? And bind it, so that will disappear. Then you will get A coming in. Then it joins it to the strand to complete the strand, okay? So now it's repaired. They just cut the mismatch? Yeah. Not the, uh, the hole? No. Just the mismatch. Because it needs, it needs that other strand to put the new one. Yeah, but I remember the, maybe the T is mismatch and out of the three strand, it's okay. They cut all the three strand and put a new one. Well, what? They cannot just choose one. What are you talking about? In uh, the routine, when the enzyme comes to cut the thing to rematch it. Well, it's cutting away, chewing away this, okay? The, if this, it, this if it cuts these much. one, it doesn't matter. Because it's still, there's one strand there to uh, copy it again, okay? okay. And just the important thing is that this needs to be changed, okay? So this is cut out and replaced with the complementary base bit, okay? So, you get recognition of the error, so enzymes will come and proofread it, okay? And usually, the DNA polymerase has some proofreading activity, you'll just go back, okay? So the DNA polymerase will go back and read the strand to make sure it copied it correctly. It will reverse itself, okay? And read the whole strand, and if it finds errors, it will cut them out, okay? And replace them. So uh, they will insert. So if it finds the error, inserts the correct one, and then uh, enzymes like DNA ligase, okay, act to join the nucleotide back to the backbone, okay. Again. And these mechanisms are more active during. From S to the end of the beginning of mitosis, so the end of G2. So beginning of S to G2 end, okay? What DNA was? Ligase. Mine. All right. We got this case study for you, the, the case of the sick cell. The sick cell is sick, so we have, a, we have sickle cell uh, anemia which is caused by mutations in hemoglobin, okay? Hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cells that's important for the transport of oxygen, okay? So uh, in sickle cell anemia, you get mutations in certain, so you see the mutation, this is a normal one. In, a, in one of the amino acids, in the sixth amino acid, okay? So remember, it's a protein hemoglobin. In the sixth amino acid, okay? What we get is uh, normally uh, the DNA it, for that amino acid is GAG, okay? In sickle cell anemia, what happens is it's, there's a mutation from A to T, okay? Changing the sequence, okay? So, what happens is, uh, because this uh, oxygen, uh, this hemoglobin is important for oxygen transport, so the red blood cells can't transport uh, oxygen effectively no more in these cases, okay? So, uh, people who have this uh, disease, their cells will look like that, their red blood cell, like this sickle cell shape, okay? Normal one is like a donut, okay? Yeah, so uh, this disease is inherited, okay? As we said, it's passed on from generation to generation. I think it's sickle cell anemia is very common in this region, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 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 also diabetes. Diabetes. So this is uh, inherited disease, okay? Now, let's answer some of these questions that we got here. As sickle, uh, 
A person with sickle cell anemia gets tired very quickly. Why is this the case? Because it can't effectively carry oxygen, okay? So the person gets tired because they can't... Why? What's oxygen important for? Almost uh, to, for cellular respiration, ATP. okay? Almost to making ATP. So they got, this person runs and then gets tired because his body is not making enough ATP for his muscles, okay? Mm. To make him go faster or quicker or longer. So he gets tired very quickly because his cells cannot carry efficiently the oxygen required for making the ATP, all right? Why, uh, why uh, there is a lot of pain when, uh, when uh, he is like uh, ex being exhausted, he just ah, feel a lot That is pain. because there's not oxygen. Uh, what happens is the body switches to different type of respiration, okay? Uh, it's called uh, anaerobic respiration without oxygen. And in this case, you produce lactic acid. It causes pain in the muscles. Then he starts. Uh, you normal people get that too. If you run a lot, okay, run for like five minutes, and you'll see you get pain right there. This is the buildup of lactic acid, okay? That's what happens to him. Yeah, it happens more quickly because he's not getting enough oxygen. Yeah. Okay, why the body use this uh, respiration? To produce more ATP? Or yeah, well, oxygen is required for ATP production. Remember the reaction? Okay, but yeah. the, the, the human, the normal cell. Yeah. Why it used to be like uh, with the... Why it's making lactic acid? Yeah. Because you're uh, over, ex you're over exhausted your body. Your body will tell you that it can't make fast enough uh, ATP for you to sustain your exercise. So it gives you like a signal. It's telling stop. you signal to stop. All right, so the reason is that this person is getting tired is because lack of oxygen transport. And why is that the case? Because ATP production is lower, okay? Now, which base pair changes causes this mutation? We already said that. From A to T, okay? All right? It's in the sixth amino acid of the hemoglobin. Uh, I'm not sure it's hemoglobin comes in hem uh, hemoglobin... A and B, I think. Uh, I think this is in beta B, okay? This mutation. So, do you think this is a somatic or a gamete? Yeah. Somatic. Gamete. Somatic. This happened in the gamete, okay? Yeah. This origin, the original mutation started from the gamete because it's passed on to the new generation. So, all your, if a person has this mutation, all of his cells will have that because during mitosis, it's copied off over to every cell, okay? So all the cells will have this mutation. All globin cells? Huh? All his whole globin cells? All his cells. But the function of this is only important in red blood cells, so that's where it's affected. You know, in the other cells, we don't, they don't need a hemoglobin, okay? Okay. It happened because of his father, his parents. Parents, mother or father, one of them, okay? So it's gamete, gamete. Yeah. Gamete, it happened in the gamete. Yeah. Well, later on, when we talk about genetics, we will talk about in more detail what's happening about uh, dominance, co-dominance, okay, incomplete dominance in this sickle cell anemia. All right. What's the answer for the last question? This one is a gamete. The last question. We haven't answered this one. What do you think the mutation happened? Maybe physical, chemical forces. Okay. Mutagens, maybe some X-rays or whatever, okay, cause the mutation in that gene. So wh when did it happen? Did during the cell cycle, during the S phase, S phase huh? when the DNA is being replicated, okay? Yeah. But the S phase. Previous question. This one. S phase. Yes. Why do you think this mutation has happened? Maybe chemical or physical forces, okay? Remember, mutations are—it's uh, caused by physical or chemical. So maybe UV, X-ray, gamma rays, chemical carcinogens. You know, this chemical maybe cause uh, anemia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or mutagens. What do you call mutagens? Okay. 
mutagens. Yes, the mutagens. Mutagens that cause mutation in the DNA. Chemicals that cause mutation. Okay. So. Where's the student who's asking me about evolution? 